Greetings and welcome to another edition of Montpelier Connection. I'm State Representative Mike Merwicki from the Wyndham Four District of Putney, Dummerston, and Westminster. Today's show is another look at an aspect of our community that makes Vermont and Wyndham County uh, the great place it is to live, uh, to live, to work, to raise a family. Uh, many of us have come to, come to Vermont um, to live a little differently, to, to get out of the white water of uh, living in, in city life, and for those qualities of life um, that aren't as easy to find uh, anywhere else. The arts are a big part of why people come to Vermont, along with the environment, small towns, uh, the great people here. Uh, today's guests, Tom Baudet and Rich Corson, are our neighbors in Dummerston, people who uh, found their way to Vermont in ways that they will share with you and uh, help make Vermont and add to that community, the quality of life in our communities that makes Vermont so special. Welcome. Thank Good you, to be Mike. here, Mike. Yeah. Assuming no one knows anything about our guests today, you want to share a little bit about how you got to Vermont and uh, what keeps you here? Um, well, the parameters of my parole are what yeah. keeps me here. Um, <laughs> yeah. but that brank, I did have some ankle. flexibility in, in yeah. choosing it. We have to hurry, though. <laughs> I noticed that <laughs> anklet <laughs> bracelet. That was a little um, I, I came here from uh, out west. I, I grew up in Michigan, but I lived in Alaska most of my adult life. And my wife and I uh, moved here very intentionally um, for the quality of life, as you say. It was a great. We were just starting our family, and we wanted... Uh, a place that uh, um, had a lot of options for schools, which it does, a lot of, uh, a lot of natural green places to play, which it does, um, and a lot of other families, which, which it does. And uh, her family is all out in the east in the New York City area. So in some way, this uh, Dummerston is like halfway between Alaska and <laughs> New York City in yeah. some weird geometry. Yeah, the way airlines fly it is. Yeah, and we're, we're kind of on the great circle route to the Caribbean mm -hmm. at some point. Yeah. 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 Rich, what's... What brought you to Vermont and from where? Tell us a little bit we, about that. Um, my wife and I lived in Brooklyn yeah. for uh, 14 years. Ah. And uh, we were in Cobble Hill yeah. and Carroll Gardens. And um, we had kids. And um, I, think, um, I think I'm in the middle of a three year midlife crisis. So uh -huh. I quit my job and wanted to raise our kids in more of a wholesome environment. And uh, so we um, have dear friends that live up here, and we've been coming up here for years and years and years and just sort of fell in love with the area. Yeah. And we always thought we'd sort of end up here, I think, post-60. Yeah. And we were like, what if we decided to take the run now? Yeah. So we, um, we, we moved up here and absolutely adore it and yeah. really uh, enjoy being up here. And it's, it just seems like a good place and a uh, smart place to raise our children. Yeah. It's interesting. There seems to be a, uh, almost a diaspora of... Vermont young adults that have moved to Brooklyn. Yeah. So you're you're starting going the other way. Going the other yeah. way. It's it actually just a big housing exchange, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's You've weird. Seen the website. Yeah. We right. get a little more bang for the buck up here, though. I think the website's <laughs> Country Mouse City Mouse. I think that's what dot com. You both have made a living in the arts. That's being generous. Yeah. Um, the yeah. arts part. Well, I know that <laughs> lots of people. The arts um, is widely the, defined. The arts part. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, lots of people practice in art here. Mm -hmm. uh, very few make a living. I think nationwide, maybe 5% of the people that practice, practice in art. Uh, you've been able to, to make a living, uh, keep a roof over your head, and keep the solar array going. Mm -hmm. um, is it any harder in Vermont, or do you have to travel? Um, well, do really do I do have it. to travel some for live stuff. Like I do the NPR's Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. I travel out to Chicago. Um, for that, which is a couple times a month. Mm -hmm. um, other things, uh, most of the recording I do, the advertisement, any other uh, radio work I do, I've got a studio at my place in mm -hmm. Dummerston and I can literally phone it in through an ISDN line. So mm -hmm. I have to travel a lot less than, than uh, you'd think to, yeah. to do this. Yeah. Um, Rich, you yeah. had made a living Mm -hmm. in the arts and mm -hmm. uh, is that something you're continuing here or? yeah yeah I spend uh, a lot of time in New York yeah. and I go to Los Angeles um, when I need to so yeah. like next week I'm on a plane to, to Los Angeles and it's just a different it's more um, project based so yeah. I can be here you know really be grounded here and then I go um, and work on projects I'm yeah. doing an event uh, in two weeks with Michael J. Fox yeah. a big uh, um, fundraiser so yeah it's it's you know, it's the sort of uh, payoff of living here is you have to 
Yep. You know. Um, he doesn't still have his home here, does he? He does not, no. Yeah. Yep. No. So you work primarily in television? Or? Yeah, television live events. Yep. 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 Um, for years, I um, ran a John Stewart's production company and worked on The Daily Show and yep. The Colbert Report. Yep. And uh, a bunch and of live other events. Day. This is not like rooster fighting or. Uh, well, I'm open to it. Yeah. I'm open to it. Yeah. Um, Funny you should mention. Yeah. Right, right. Right. Um, there's an event we're doing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We'll talk about it later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, live events. I do a lot of fundraising work, yeah. um, and um, it, you know, comedy is my background. So I tend to match comics up with big events or trying to raise money for yeah. you know Parkinson's or poverty or things like that. Yeah, great. Autism. I do a lot of autism yeah. stuff. It's another great way that I think people can can use their talents to to share in ways to, and to help uh, shine light on things, but also raise money. Yeah. So, um, great opportunity, and you guys are involved in something coming up pretty soon. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, hooking on to what Rich just said about you know putting together you know comics. I come from I know a lot of uh, um, really talented, funny people, and Rich knows everybody in the comedy business. It seems like, and we were sitting around a year ago, um, and and being in uh involved with our schools and our communities and all these things you know we're constantly being asked as you are as everyone is in in a small town you know can you donate this for this auction can you bid on this auction can yep. you mc our fundraiser and and you get spread so thin and and it's always uh, the you keep going back to the same wells for donations to your school to your um, hockey team or whatever it is and we thought there's got to be a better way. And, and so Rich thought of this idea of putting on a couple times a year a really fun, big show, charge a generous ticket price for it so that we can raise some money with this. And so that you're not hitting up the same people over and over, but you've got seven, 800, whatever we can pack into whatever building we can find here. And it's been the Latches Theater um, last time and we'll be there again next Thursday night um, with our second uh, event. And we raised, what, $28,000 for the... Um, so what we do, it's called The Hatch is the organization. And uh, we pick a uh, beneficiary, if you will, um, our first one was for the Latches uh, yeah. Restoration Project called Take a Seat. And it looks great right now. You're right, and we were only a part of that, but we're very proud of, yeah. of, of being a part of that. And it looks great. It yeah. absolutely does. So we're very happy to be one of the early um, acts to come back into that renovated space here next week. And the um, uh, beneficiary of this one is going to be New England Youth Theater, which is another you know great arts institution in, in Brattleboro. It serves a wide um, uh, swath of the community and uh, um, helps a lot of kids uh, in, you know, in their confidence building and all of this, uh, um, all the wonderful things they do. And it entertains a hell of a lot yeah. of people. Uh, and so we've got uh, seven storytellers mm -hmm. coming up from uh, New York. One, uh, Brian Babylon, one of my co-panelists mm -hmm. on... Uh, um, Wait, Wade is coming in from Chicago, and uh, um, Tom Shalou, who Rich can tell you a lot more about, is going to yeah, be our are host. All, these are all like you know, really, really seasoned. It's pre it's really amazing. Um, they're all really well known in this area. They're all hilarious. They're all um, um, are on the road all the time doing this, and you know, they're just wonderful people. Who um, we asked them, and they said yes, and they they're coming up and telling you know funny stories to raise money for the New England Youth Theater. So we have uh, a killer lineup. Um, one of the guys, Dave Hill, is a contributor on This American Life. Ophira Eisenberg is like a moth host around mm -hmm. the country and she's a Grand Slam winner. Adam, Mo Adam Wade is a moth Grand Slam winner. Um, who else, we have Brian, who's Brian, a, and then we have moth a, 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 a guy, pair of uh, young women. Um, for that, those who don't know what the moth is. Oh, sure. It's a storytelling organization that Tom has been a part of yeah. that has a radio show on NPR. 
and um, they have a wonderful podcast, and it's um, really heartfelt, entertaining stories. Usually yeah. on, I think, in Vermont on Sunday. Afternoon. Yeah, and, yeah, and the Moth's whole thing, they're, they've been very, re storytelling, live storytelling is really taking off. Somebody told me there's like 180 live storytelling venues in New York City right now. Wow. Um, and it's like clubs are giving over like a yeah. night of the week to this, and in Chicago where Brian Babylon hosts uh, the Moth's Slam every, every week uh, out there. and. What it is, is the moth formula is true stories, told live, no notes. Yeah. So if you've ever been to one, I mean, it's, it's an amazing experience. It's, it's a, one of the best experiences I've ever had as a performer mm -hmm. um, was to stand up there just raw, you in a microphone in the middle of the stage and tell them the truth, truth, truth from, so, from, from my life. Yeah. And, that, and that audience feeling how ready they were to hear that. And, and I have a, full, a theory about it that I think it's, it's a reaction to our electronic media, yeah. which is wonderful, and I use it like crazy, and I don't know what I would do without it, but I think it does leave us wanting for that, that. that simple Relatable. human experience of tell me something that's true. Yeah. Look in my eyes and, and yeah. talk to me. And, and so what we're doing is we're, we're, we're taking that and um, adding, because uh, not all moth stories, although they're all wonderful and excellently uh, um, done, they're, they're not all funny. And we want an evening of, of, of funny mm -hmm. on top of the fact that it's, it's true yeah. and live. Yeah. yeah, it's really exciting for, you know, we're trying to figure out a different way to raise money for people. Yeah. You know, it, it was really, really uh, interesting for me as someone that lived in Brooklyn and you can sort of be anonymous. You know, your kids go to school and occasionally they say, would you mind helping us out with auction or this? But coming here, you realize that if you want to have a New England Youth Theater and you want to have a Brattleboro Hockey and you want to have a Ski Mountain, like you kind of have to step up and help out. And that was really shocking to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> like within three months, I was like, oh my God. Like, yeah. and, and no good and, deed goes unpunished. Yes, yeah. and believe me, they're all, you know, like the people that, you know, grow kale and the maple syrup, yeah. like, they're all worthy causes. But at some point, you're like, I. You know, I don't know how to balance yeah. all the asks. Mm -hmm. So we they're, were, all, all they're all worthy, worthy yeah. a, a thousand percent. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it was really sort of eye-opening for my wife and I, who had never been sort of like in the kindest way possible, like shooken down. Like, yeah. <laughs> like every, they're like, hey man. And then after a while, you like, there are people in town you don't want, like you see them coming and you're like, I'm gonna go this way yeah. because I think they might ask me for something. <laughs> right. um, uh, so it was really, uh, so what we're really trying to do is this idea of putting on something that people will want to go to, and while they're enjoying it and having this amazing night out, they're also contributing to the community. Yep. So it's like we're trying to sort of hit it on both sides. Yeah. Um, and it's been, so far, the community seems very receptive to it. You know, yeah. I think people appreciate getting something for giving something. Yeah. And I know that's like a, you know, it shouldn't be that way, but it's also nice to be able to um, spread awareness and raise money while you're actually having a good time doing mm -hmm. it. And that's kind of you what bet. we're trying to do. Yeah, and, and also the, uh, the, all the people we brought in for our first one in the spring, they were, they're all came in from, up from New York. And, and as Rich was saying, you know, they, they did this for nothing. I mean, these are people who could be booking dates all over you yeah. know, the, the New England. The country. And, and getting high ticket prices for yeah. what they do. They're coming here to do it for nothing. And they feel great about it. Yeah. And uh, that our business model is that they have to do it for nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not yeah. going to raise the any. whole thing collapses. If we had to pay yeah. these people what they were worth. I mean, we it wouldn't right. make yeah. any sense at yeah. all. We'd have to charge three hundred bucks. A, and <laughs> same with you know we uh, we just donate our time and yeah. phone calls and you know just it, it it's really a nice thing. And the people that come up feel the love from the community yeah. and they get on stage mm -hmm. and they tell their stories. And they walk off and they go, that was great. Like, yeah. let me know when the next one is. We'd love to come up. And, and it's just far enough away that uh, you can sort of entice, you know, yeah. it's not too bad. So, well, so far we've had, people have been very kind to us. They, mm -hmm. have, you know, we've asked and they've really come through. There's an old saying that the quickest way to build a bridge between two people is to tell a story. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe that's part of that allure when we don't feel as connected uh, because of electronic um, communications that mm -hmm. when people start sharing their stories we really uh, open up our hearts and our minds to people and it's wonderful to hear that um, there's this proliferation and gaining popularity about something that's about as old as uh, 
us as soon as we we learn how to talk, and yeah. and for some of us still learning how to walk upright. Yep. Uh, um, will you be part of the group? I'm before? I'm going to be um, uh, sort of introducing the things. I'll uh -huh. do some uh, um, some stuff here here and there. I'm not going to do a featured story. Mm -hmm. um, I would have had we needed uh, um, an extra yeah. one, but but we didn't right now. Uh, part of uh, what Rich said too is, you know, you get asked over and over to do things, and one of the yeah. things that I realized after living in a small town in Alaska for 23 years is you can wear it out <laughs> pretty quickly. Yeah. You're like, oh, who's MC yeah. and uh, you know, uh, oh, let me guess. oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something else and uh, <laughs> and so this is a way to we can keep we can do what we know how to do, which yeah. is to put on fun shows and that without wearing it out because yeah. we we bring in new people all the time. Yeah. And uh, that way you don't have, you know, you know, me auctioning off the, si you know, the flowers at the end of the silent auction. Right. Again, yeah. you know. Who wants a year's <laughs> worth yeah. of apple cider donuts? Yeah. Right. Okay, people, yeah. buy raffle tickets. Don't want those last year's donuts? <laughs> right. Did it's, we say it's November 14th? It is. 7 o'clock. November 14th, 7 o'clock, the last year's tickets theater. at uh, nyt.org. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's called um, Storytellers on a Mission. Yeah. For people who haven't yet been to New England Youth Theater, uh, they're continually doing great productions. But the other thing, as somebody who's worked in youth and community development for years, I've seen what happens there. And they are one of the best youth development programs out there. Mm -hmm. what, we, what we hope for in a youth development program is you bring individuals together, you teach them skills, but then the next step is to help them use those skills as a group and then hopefully take that out into the world. And uh, I mean, that's what good citizenship is. Right. Uh, in, in many areas, that's what, what athletics can hopefully do, mm. um, especially if you have good coaches. And at lower levels, that's mm. not often uh, always the case. Not all kids play sports, though. So that's right. why for New England Youth Theater to be there and what Stephen uh, has done and, um, uh, and Peter is just incredible that they've now created this culture that's moving into the next generation yeah. of, of kids that have gone through there. So I uh, totally encourage people, if you haven't gone to anything that New England Youth Theater does, um, check out. I think Oliver is in rehearsals right now. They're going to be doing that for the Christmas season. Uh, check it out. Um, so along with that, though, there's another way to support New England Youth Theater besides going to it, and, and, and this is one way. Um, yeah, if the idea of going to a musical with children in it is just like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> painful, yeah. you don't have to. You yeah. can, you can if come to I the head. I didn't have kids now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what, I'm going to see right. other people's children in a play? Why would I do that? Singing and dancing? No, we, no, we, we, we appreciate that. It, <laughs> it's a holiday show that is not the Nutcracker. Right, that's, that's right. There's no like, kicking legs. No, no, there's a cell line. You'd do well, well in this, but it's a holiday <laughs> show that is not the Nutcracker. Well, I love the Nutcracker. Cracker, but Mike Merwicki, 2013. 17 <laughs> times in, the, in a row. I think uh, Garrison Keillor did a song a few years ago to the, to the tune of the opening. So this is my 17th Nutcracker year in a row of going to the Nutcracker. And at some point, you're going to say enough. Yes. Um, and so now you can go see Oliver, or you can come see the storytellers yeah. at the Hatch. Um, so is the Hatch a, a nonprofit? Uh, people yes. buy these tickets and then tax deductible or can they make deductions? It is. Well, the, um, New England, the, the money is going to actually flow through New England Youth Theater, okay. which is yeah. the, uh, a licensed nonprofit. So and you're, you're hoping to, to make this a regular oh, way yeah. of we're contributing gonna try to, to the community. We're going to try to do two a year. Yeah, two. Okay. And mm -hmm. we're going to try, our lofty goal is to um, start broadening outside of the local area in terms yeah. of, you know, attaching um, other kinds of sponsors mm -hmm. and companies that we feel, you know, we've had a great media partner with VPR, mm -hmm. yeah. so they actually air the event. Oh, um, so there's opportunities for Vermont-based businesses that aren't necessarily in Brattleboro or, yeah. you know, right to get involved because it does broadcast out throughout the state. Yeah. So um, we may do one that's a little broader mm -hmm. uh, in our next our next round. And that and that was the original vision: is how do we how do we bring new money, if you will, yeah. into the yeah. the Brattleboro community, um, yep. this philanthropic effort. And, and one of the ways is to make a, 
uh, a production that people want to be a part of. Not only do they want to pay money to go see it and have a good time, but businesses and, and organizations yeah. want to be associated yeah. with it. Uh, and so we're going to have to slowly build the brand, if yeah. you will, and then we can reach out into the surrounding communities. And, and organizations like New England Youth Theater would be a, a, a good example of how we could do that because it is a, a regional yeah. institution, although it's, it's, they would like to broaden their reach as, yeah. as well. And we have a lot of uh, local nonprofits who have contacted us mm -hmm. and, and would like to talk to us about um, partnering with us in sure. fu future events. So yeah. I don't think we're going to have too many problems finding people to work yeah. with. Here. Now, if people or, or sponsors uh, want to participate, who do they get in touch with? They can go. We have a website, yeah. uh, hatchvt.org. Okay. And um, there's a link to contact us and someone okay. get in touch with them. Great. But that's that's great. We we're open to collaborations and sure. um, all sorts of stuff. So you're looking uh, beyond just people coming to your performance. If you can generate corporate sponsors, absolutely, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, the goal is to build the brand so yeah. that we can um, really impact organizations. You yeah. know, it's really it's really a cool thing when um, a lot of the organizations that we're talking to don't, you know, they're sort of focus on keeping the doors open every day yep. and don't have sort of the infrastructure to put on a big event. Yep. And um, that's where we sort of feel like we can step in and be like, okay, we can help you with that. We yep. can bring these performers up. We have enough contacts um, and we can help you, you know, maximize sort of a big event for you, you yep. know, in the year. And it's, it's fun. It's, you know, fun for us and it's exciting for us. And we all, you know, uh, Tom and I became friends when I moved up here and it's, we have two other, uh, Tom's wife, Rita and Elizabeth Catlin. And we all truly enjoy hanging out together. So it's sort of a fun thing to do yeah. um, and a great way to um, shine a light on some of these organizations. Yeah. Uh, this event is about uh, storytellers. The last one you did was storytellers mm -hmm. as well. Is this going to be the format going forward? Or are you going to? Tom is pushing hard for contra dancing. Uh huh. Yeah. He's on, for, for the radio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. It's like uh, it's, uh, nothing. On nothing. The radio. Right. Nothing translates to radio like yeah, contra dancing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we 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 feel like it's a. Um, I, I think we definitely want to stay in the world of comedy. Yeah. I feel like that's like a nice um, thing that I think in this area is like a, sort of underutilized. Yeah. You know, um, the use of comedic storytellers and comedic performers, and um, you know, stand up. We talked about doing stand up, mm -hmm. and stand up is so, uh, it doesn't have the, you know, great stand up can connect. Yeah. You know, guys like Louis C.K. and Chris Rock, those guys connect to you on a whole other level. They are able to like elicit um, a thought process that you've had, but haven't been able to, you know, um, articulate. And they can do it through, you know, telling jokes. But it also becomes a thing where um, it's such a specific uh, point of view mm -hmm. that um, we felt like storytelling appeals to a, a broader yeah. audience. Yeah. So I think we want to stay within like the storytelling world if yep. we can. And it, it's it's no accident that it also um, translates well to radio. Yeah. And, and I think that this the broadcast of it, which we'll do after the fact, uh, this show that we're recording next week on the 14th will air on... Uh, Thanksgiving Day, oh, great. and then re-air either on Christmas Day or New or New Year's. They haven't decided yet. So you can sit um, around the radio yeah, with yeah. the fire going. Pull up your nutmeg. <laughs> Here's another and, funny storyteller. And I'll be hosting that show, yeah. so we'll sort of just yeah. isolate the stories themselves, and then I'll I'll put it together with yeah. with uh, with a different narrative. Now, when people go to the event that night, how many storytellers will there be? Seven. Yep. So do they have a time limit? Or is one yeah. person going to go uh, on for an we hour? Have, we have or? Two, no, no, no. No, 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 no. We have two, <laughs> like, really amazing uh, people that close each act. Yeah. And they'll do probably, you know, 12 to 14 minute stories. Yeah. And then we will... Similar to The Moth. Yeah, yes, well, that's exactly sure. it. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's, uh, you know, they've been, The Moth has been doing this for uh, a long time. And, and they're... That's their, kind of their formula, you know, 10, 10 14 minutes tops. Uh, and that's, that's a good amount of time for someone to sit through a story. Yeah. And the slams are a shorter form, um, and I've done only one slam, and that's more like five minutes, uh -huh. which is more of a challenge. Yeah, like, you know, it is. It's always harder to write short or yeah. speak short. Yeah. It is for me anyway. Uh, and uh, so some of our, some of our acts uh, will be shorter stuff 
in between. So, and our uh, host will do um, probably eight to ten minutes of um, his sort of you know golden tried and true you know, jokes at the top of the show. This guy Tom Shalou, who, okay, um, is on Jimmy Fallon all the time, and he um, had a Comedy Central half hour, so he's very you know he, he will people will enjoy him. Yep, he's very seasoned. Um, we've got a couple minutes left. Uh, when Pete, if we want to look again as to where people can get tickets for that, it's just online. Can they go to the Latches itself? Uh, they can go to uh, the New England Youth Theater, right? Right. To buy okay. tickets if they want to buy tickets. Yeah. And uh, if not, they can go to the website, yeah. the yeah. NYT website. Are operators standing by now? They are. They are. They're standing. They're standing by the pub yeah. down the street, right. but, <laughs> waiting but for the phone are, to ring. Yeah. Right. We have a team yeah. of operators. They're in India. Yeah, yeah. it's fine. Okay. Yeah. Their English is very. It's, they're nice people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. impeccable. Yeah. So yeah, seven o'clock next Thursday, November fourteenth. Yeah. Storytellers on a mission. Yeah. Well, I, I certainly hope it comes off as well as the pa Paula Poundstone event the other night that just packed, uh, packed the latches. Indeed. Uh, yes. She was great. So was the your. Opening bit with with her son. It turned out right. Yeah, yes, it was her son, a random passerby. Right. Yeah. Turned out she, he was related <laughs> Just, to her. Who knew? You yeah. Know? <laughs> Funny how these things yeah. happen sometimes. Yeah. But uh, I think you did come out on top there, didn't you? I don't know. We're gonna. Uh, I'm meeting Paul in Chicago tomorrow. Okay. We're gonna have it out all right. once and for all. Yeah. And uh, was that something you had something to do with to bring her here? Um, they just asked me how to get in touch with her, so yeah. yeah, I pretty much did the whole thing. Yeah, well, it's a great show. It's great. Latches looks great. Uh, you know, thanks to you and all the people. I mean, it's just been talk about a community. That effort. really was. Yeah, yeah. That, it's important uh, to have that there. Pulls mm -hmm. pulls something together, and to, to have a venue like that mm -hmm. again, where where people can come together. Uh, you need venues like that to have community. Mm -hmm. uh, you, if, you, if there aren't gathering places, mm -hmm. uh, and having seats that aren't painful. That's right. And yeah. Or dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> you did you ever get uh, your tetanus shot after that incident? I did. No, <laughs> okay, I good, did. It was good. a good thing too. Was, that Had coil the, was the bullseye rusty. rash. Oh. Everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Really hurts the theater experience, though. Literally, when you, you have to suffer through. Um, moving forward, do you have any ideas yet for the next show, or are you? Well, we do. Um, nothing that we can say out loud yet, okay. um, because it's not uh, um, signed and delivered. But we have some yeah. really exciting prospects for our spring show, right. and uh, so well, let's get this one taken care of, and yeah. uh, and and then uh, then we'll start working hard on that one. Yep. Yeah. So your website is hatchvt.org. Dot yep. org. Yep. And then New England Youth Theater's website. Nuit.org. Uh, great. So we'll we'll have those graphics up on the screen. That would great. be great. Terrific. We'd appreciate that. Yeah. Well, thank you for taking the time. Of course. Um, oh, thank you, Mike. Uh, looking yeah. forward to another basketball yes, season. Have, yes. Yes. Go walk your farm. Yeah. Uh, when you say playing. Yeah. Do you mean eating a lot and doing nothing? It, is that what? <laughs> it's getting been, ready yes. for the next basketball season. I've been playing. Season. Yes. Good. All right. Well, well you, you'll be in good company. Good. Right? Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you, Mike. And, and thank you for visiting with us, and thanks to all the people here at BCTV once again uh, for, for bringing the community to you. Uh, until next time, this is Mike Merwicki. Thanks a lot, and bye-bye.